Rates of obesity and type 2 diabetes remain high in the United States. These types of very common metabolic conditions are strongly linked with what my research focuses on, metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease, or MAFLD. MAFLD is the buildup of fat in the livers of people with some type of metabolic dysfunction. It's on the rise globally. It's expected to impact 33% of the adult population in the US by 2030. If treated early, MAFLD progression can be reversed, but most patients don't typically develop symptoms until the disease has become difficult to treat. So at that point, it can progress to cirrhosis, liver failure, or cancer. But why are some people more likely to develop severe fibrosis or cancer than others? How can we better control progression of this disease? To help this growing population of patients, we need answers to these questions. At the root of these questions, we need to understand how cells in the liver make decisions. Cells don't have brains to process information. They're basically just organized bags of molecules. And yet our health is deeply reliant on our cells making the right decisions throughout our lives when faced with stressful situations. If cells can't properly deal with the stress of fat buildup in the liver, like in MACLD, it can lead to more serious disease. I'm most interested in the role of cell metabolism in these decisions. When you think of metabolism, you might think of your stomach breaking down the food you eat, but there's more to it than that. The nutrients from our food get broken down into molecules in the individual cells in our tissues. And there, they interact with other molecules to form the materials that the cells need to survive. How the materials are used by the cells can then impact cellular decision-making. I focus on a specific population of cells in the liver called hepatic progenitor cells that are associated with chronic diseases like MAFLD. These cells are associated with features of tissue damage, like inflammation and fibrosis, and the area they take up in the liver tends to expand as disease becomes more severe. So controlling the formation and the expansion of these cells is a potential strategy for treating diseases like MAFLD. So what I want to know is, can we control these hepatic progenitor cells metabolically? We know that metabolism is important in MAFLD, so can we alter aspects of our diet to control it? To study hepatic progenitor cells specifically, I'm um, using a specialized method of growing cells. So we isolate cells directly from mouse liver and we culture them in three dimensions and they form these hollow spheres. These spheres are called organoids and we know that they're a good model for studying hepatic progenitor cells. We added a variety of nutrients to the organoids and measured the effects on organoid growth. Out of all of the nutrients we tested, only one of them impacted organoid growth and that's vitamin C. Vitamin C limited organoid growth, and the more vitamin C we added, the more it inhibited growth. So this is an exciting result for sure, but now we want to explore whether this observation could help control MAFLD. So we're using the organoid system to understand what vitamin C is doing inside the cell. We're also studying whether vitamin C levels can limit hepatic progenitor cell expansion and MAFLD progression in mice. So far, we see that mice receiving different amounts of vitamin C, respond differently to chronic liver injury, and we're working on characterizing this effect. These studies will help us to determine if vitamin C might be useful in helping actual MAFLD patients by keeping hepatic progenitor cells from proliferating. This would be exciting since we know that vitamin C is safe for patients. What would be really exciting though is understanding how this works. So we might get the result that if we give mice high amounts of vitamin C, MAFLD progresses more slowly, but this would only be correlative. We wouldn't actually know how it works. By using the organoids, I'm able to understand how vitamin C is limiting growth inside the cell at the molecular level, really understanding how vitamin C is affecting these specific hepatic progenitor cells. And understanding that is what's going to help us make a dietary nutrient like vitamin C more effective in helping patients.